A warm welcome to all our viewers to our series Natural Medicine. Adele Dutweiler, also called Mrs. Migros, founded a clinic many years ago, and today Dr. Petra Vikul is with us again. She is the chief of medicine there. I'm very honoured and very thankful that you're here. Welcome. Yes, thank you for having me. You're welcome. I read the newspaper today and it said something that gave me a strange feeling and I want to discuss that with you. It said that the plan is to double on the influenza vaccines that they have to order now for the, this autumn because they're afraid that the influenza will collide with the possible second wave and will bring the health system to its knees like it apparently happened this spring. Or almost, whatever. I always have the feeling that this is the wrong approach, that we focus on vaccines instead of preventative measurements. So I'd like to know from you what you think about this as an expert in this field. Well, I think humans wouldn't exist anymore if we couldn't rely every minute of every day on what is protecting us. And we need to know the connection between the power of my own immune system in contrast to a wanted protection that I think I can realise through a vaccination. The immune defence in our bodies, our body is in standby every day. It's about viruses, bacteria, parasites. It's about fungi. It's about blocking the development of tumour cells. That means this standby, this condition of my immune system needs to be protected. And we have to do everything possible so that it stays in this condition every day. There is no weapon there is no other option that is stronger to fight a viral, bacterial, parasitical or other contamination of our body. The immune defence is times Mount Everest more effective than a vaccine. This is the initial situation. That means our body has hundreds of thousands of immune responses that it's doing to stop these dangers. And if we take the example of the influenza vaccination, these are laboratory viruses. So I'm creating an immunization protection through the laboratory viruses by demanding from the body, with the help of antibodies, to push its memory capacity for a future attack. But the vaccine includes contamination. The vaccine isn't free of formaldehyde, of additives, sometimes aluminium, thimerosal and such, mercury. So I can't get sick, but on the other hand, I have to create an impulse for an immune response through the vaccination. In the long run, if I vaccinate a lot, it will have a negative impact on the condition of my immune response. We know that now. Today, there is a development of diseases through vaccines that the body can't respond to adequately. We can see it for patients with neurodegenerative diseases and many others, but the protection that I can build from a viral contamination starts, for example, with the mucous membranes. If my mucous membranes are not intact, then that's the first contact of the breath. For example, if I breathe in and with that breathe in some contamination in a very critical situation because the mucous membranes have to defend. The mucous membranes have to change a foreign protein into a body's own so that it triggers an immune response. And this process depends on the health of the mucous membranes. But the mucous membranes of the nose and of the sinuses 
are in a spe specific relation to our bowel. If I eat gluten and with that trigger an inflammation of my intestinal mucosa after 4 to 70 hours and I might not notice this for many years but it will weaken my immune capacity that can also be measured. How strong is my mucosa immunity? Because if I have a contamination, bacterial or viral, it triggers a lot of immune responses so that the body is able to fight it. And that is not possible if my mucous membranes are, for example, chronically inflamed, even through amalgam fillings. When swallowing the mercury and other parts of the amalgam, in the long run it will change the mucous membranes and their ability to function as part of the immune defence. That is very important. Perhaps people that have a lack of zinc, and we can see it, we can measure it, 70% of people are lacking zinc. Zinc is a trace element and zinc coordinates more than a hundred enzymes. The immune capacity can't be high, especially not intracellular. A virus, a virus acts only intracellular, but it has to enter somehow. It's the task of zinc to trigger an immune response. Zinc is something that is only reabsorbed by the bowel by 30%. Zinc is also an element that needs its receptor. If a person has a high toxic contamination, for example, through amalgam, through aluminium, through other things, very often the receptor for zinc is blocked. So zinc can't operate and this weakens the intracellular immune capacity. We have made experiments with human blood and we exposed it to Wi-Fi radiation for an hour. Before we could see under the microscope that the blood, which is the first row in the immune defence, our white blood cells, they have to be active. They walk around and you can really watch them. It's called phagocyte, how they take in particles, phagocyte. That is the so-called acute leukosis. The leukocytes attack any foreigners in the blood and destroy them for us. We don't feel this, but it's happening. We have viral contamination every day from everything, not just from the laboratory, not just foreign viruses, everything. And that happens without us even thinking about it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here now. So these leukocytes or this blood was exposed to Wi-Fi radiation for an hour, and what we saw was... It gets sticky. No, not that. The stickiness happens to the erythrocytes, the red ones, the oxidants. No, the immune defence shuts down. That means it is not doing the job anymore. I've also taken a, a blood sample of the candidates beforehand, then irradiated it and sent it to the Institute in Berlin, the Ber I M. D, and they significantly proved that on 80% of the samples, a so-called oxidative stress paralyzes the leukocytes. So this is how free radicals develop that in turn are destructive. The cellular network causes my immunity, my alertness, my mindfulness to be suspended. No wonder that the influenza is coming and is affecting many people, isn't it? Exactly. The only problem is that if I get vaccinated against influenza, it's three or four types of the virus. A wave of influenza has so many types of the virus and nobody knows which ones. So for me, it is really not logical that while I have my own army that is in charge of dealing with this and protecting me, that I should protect myself with some kind of Russian roulette. Which of this will actually cause an infection? A viral contamination is a process we go through every day. 
We have to build antibodies every day. That's why it is okay if our children fall sick once in a while, so that as part of the response to the, to the fever, they can build on these antibodies and they will become strong personalities that will be able to handle the next wave of influenza easily because of their production of antibodies. And there are many things that can strengthen the immune system naturally. But this is not the path we follow. The government is going another way. Yes, it is. And for them, it is inconvenient and easy. And they make the people think that they have done something for themselves to be able to handle the influenza because they think they are protected. If the body is fighting influenza, which is a natural process, it just needs some support. Well, many people die of influenza, according to the Swiss statistics of the last 10 years. It's shown in numbers. I wouldn't just say that they die of influenza. We always have to put it in perspective. One question is followed by another. So people that are weakened in their immunity because of reason A, reason B, reason C, reason D, they might not have the capacity to fight another viral contamination. On top of that, it's not that it's not compatible with life, with nature, with some healthy common sense that we both sit here and you'll suddenly have an angina or tonsillitis. That's not possible. These are processes. In my opinion, that for 99% of the time are originating in the organism. Of course, we're not talking about accidents and we are also not talking about the virus that we just had here, but every virus is facing an unbelievable army that reacts immediately because the body's duty is to protect us and it is bound to some requirements to be able to fulfil this duty. And especially for children, it is so important that they are allowed to build a healthy and normal immune defence. I've seen this as a doctor. We used to have whooping cough epidemics every six years and whooping cough already at a young age. Also for babies need to, needs to be treated in hospital. There are different phases. The children will have shortness of breath. They have to go to hospital. But the vaccination showed me that the children that got whooping cough every six years were the ones that were vaccinated. It was never the children I cared for that from the age of two, three, four, five or six had whooping cough once and the mother accompanied them lovingly for six weeks. They had an immunity that was like a wall and nothing could ever think of triggering anything there and building a healthy defence is one of the biggest fortunes that we can have as humans. I wonder how all this pro-vaccine can have such a strong lobby and support. If you listen to this about whooping cough and many other stories that I heard where it's doubted. Yes, especially I'm one of those people that questions everything. And I have made it my motto... to protect everything. Life has to be protected and preserved. For example, when the varicella vaccine was released, I did not understand this at all. Because chickenpox is something that we want children to go through. It provides lifetime immunity, we know that. Chickenpox viruses can stay in the spinal cord. And if the immunity is weakened, and only then, a rear-end collision, shock, trauma, diseases that can shut down the immunity, cause the immunity to become weaker, and can reactivate the chickenpox viruses, and you'll get shingles. We know this. But to tell a layman, we'll give you a vaccination and you won't get chickenpox, and you won't get shingles, means... 
to assume to be able to judge what could be happening 30 years from now. The problem is also the way that it is made public. I find it very sad and irresponsible. We used to bring our children to kindergarten so that they could get herd immunity. The measles party. And that children nowadays are not allowed to experience this is something that makes me sad. And where I say it is our duty to protect the children. I can say this from today's perspective because I cared for these children for many years that had built a healthy and strong immunal protection. I'm remembering a story, the miracle of Denmark. In those years of the Spanish flu, and the Danish ate mostly raw fruit and vegetables, and their death rate did not increase during the Spanish flu compared to the previous years. If we look at that example, wouldn't this be the best preventative measure for the people, instead of putting it in quarantine and telling them, eat whatever you want, if you just stay at home, wear a mask and keep a distance of two metres? Yes, I keep saying this. That a disease always sticks to the precondition of my body. And if I realise this, I will act differently. I will keep active because 99% of the people are not affected. It only affects people with a pre-existing medical history. And for those, it is good to stay at home and keep distance and need more support through this. But they don't get anything. They don't get anything apart from isolation. Everything else stays the same. This can't be good in the long run. If we look towards autumn, what could you recommend to our viewers to avoid being affected by influenza or the second wave, but to stabilise and strengthen our body? Well, the very, very most important thing regarding 5G cellular network, what we talked about before, is a conscious and healthy exposure. It's not about not using the cellular network at all, but the question is, how long am I using it? How high is the contamination? How am I able to relax and regenerate at night? That is so important because there is a connection, a causality between this epidemic and 5G. That means I can start here. To get more information, I can't do this now in the moment to explain everything. The second thing is that a sound immune defence is connected to a healthy bowel. So I have to look after my gut. And if you are still not able every day, like a biological clock, to build a healthy defence and have bowel movement, then this is what you have to work on. We have talked about this before in these talks, the importance of the bowel. More than 80% of my immunity is anchored here and I can't expect to have a healthy mucous membrane if my bowel is not sound. There is no treatment of allergies otherwise. It all starts with healthy bowel. High level of vitamin C, very important. You should choose a high dosage of vitamin C in these times. What? dosage would you say? You can't take more than 2,000 milligrams, so 2 grams. Intravenously we go as high as 7 and higher 10 and 15 and 20 but for the layman it's fine. It has to be a supplement that slowly releases the vitamin C. I also like to recommend lemon smoothies. You will need 5 organic lemons, clean them nicely and shred them with the skin. Then you make a mush out of it and mix it well. Then you can dilute it, maybe with a banana or with an apple and with some water and then it's, well, drinkable. You can also keep it in the fridge and you can drink about one-eighth every day. That is the power of nature. And it is unbelievable what the body is able to do with this in combination with some zinc. Because the zinc is a basic trace element 
and I observe that the level is too low. Can I just ask for zinc at the pharmacy and it'll be fine? Normally you can buy 15 milligrams over the counter. I would also ask people to measure their zinc level, but intracellular, about 70% of zinc is in the cell, not in the blood, that this level is measured in the whole blood. We sometimes use 60 milligrams or more to get it to a high level. Another thing that is important is the causality between the pandemic and vitamin D. People that live north of Rome are not enough exposed to the sun. Our working conditions today offer very little sun exposure. And if we're in the sun, it's maybe the head or the arms only. In the past, people used to be outside for six hours a day. Light activated the vitamin D inside us. Who produces vitamin D? Our mother. Our mother produces cholesterol, which is activated by UV light to an active vitamin D. Vitamin D in our body has to be changed from inactive to active. And if you have a house with a thousand flats, you only have one key. So vitamin D is part of the healthy health of the cell. Vitamin D is a police that watches and tells the killer cells, go there, because there is this tumour cell that wants to reproduce, destroy it. But this is new. Everything that I hear is neither the oncology talks about D3 nor the preventative medicine. 100,000 immune reactions depend on vitamin D. It's wrong that it's called a vitamin. It's a hormone. The most important hormone to survive. And if you ask me, what do I need to know? Twice a year, at the latest, in October, you have to collect some cash. It's maybe about 30 Swiss francs and get the vitamin D level measured. We measure it on every patient. And for me, the answer it's fine, or I had, or I'm taking, is not enough. How high is it? Because our body is always working through signals. It always needs a signal, and the vitamin D has a strong impact on the signalling of the immune functions. There was a study in the year 2000 in the USA with breast tumour patients with an explicit proof. 30% would not have developed breast cancer with a high level of vitamin D. And people have to check this at the latest in October and please, don't keep going year by year by year. You will always have less each spring and you will not manage to catch up. And it is alarming how high the dosages we give have to be. Sometimes we give 5,000 per week. We push it quite high so that the body can reach a high level. I often inject 300,000 units at once to have it on a high level and to reach the base level, which is 100 to 170 nanomole per litre. So we don't have to talk about vaccines. We don't have to talk about what's important if we neglect to know this from the people. This is just that they really are basic tasks and we can't just ignore that and think if we give protection by giving the people, people used to mummify themselves in the age of chivalry with armour. Just the eyes were uncovered. If you have a low level of vitamin D today, then you are the one that is completely naked between them and says, I can do without it. This is just irresponsible. It has been such a great, important episode once more. It's amazing that D3 still has the status of a wallflower. Maybe because it's not patented. And because it doesn't cost anything and nobody wants to invest into informing people about it. And sorry for interrupting. There is the anomaly to believe as soon as I go into the sun, I have to be protected. With sunscreen? We've known for 20 years that melanoma is not caused by the sun. The sun is made responsible for things. A receptiveness for sunburn. We're not talking about sunburn. 
but I'm convinced that my body doesn't have the requirements to endure long sun exposure. Then there are reasons for it. It's normally people that are over acidified that get sunburned easily, apart from our different skin types. But every sun protection factor higher than eight is toxic. So if I'm constantly using 30 or 40, I'm not just blocking vitamin D. 99% is not going to be activated, but in the long run, it will also be bad for my organism because everything we're putting on the skin gets in immediately. And aluminium plays a big role here. Thank you so much. Eventually, people can also get their D3 level measured with you in the Swiss Mountain Clinic. Yes. In combination with a detoxification. That is the base out of the questions. Very important. Well, we are a bit afraid, but also full of hope to know that we can do what we can do to avoid both the influenza and another wave and not just watch helplessly, but it's in our own hands. Not just looking on the outside, but starting inside. The doctor just explained everything. Watch out with Wi-Fi, 5G and avoid radiation in the bedroom. If you have to use it, fine. But if you're done, leave it. It's blocking your path to health. And on the other hand, D3, she explained it. Have it measured twice a year in a laboratory. Get clear results and get it supplemented. And of course, again, the bowel. It also depends on our diet. This whole carbohydrate mania and fast food chains are not helping us to become healthy. It's up to us. It's inconvenient to change something, but if you don't want to suffer, it's up to you. That's it for today. Thank you again. And all the best to the viewers. See you next time.